everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of ARG Presents. I am Amigo Aaron. Alongside me, the educator, the illuminator, and the wind generator, John Boat of Car Schaller. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, wow. It's getting jiggy up in here. <laughs> so, Boat, for those that joined us last week, you'll recall the retro roulette was spun, and the deal was made for us to play games on the Atari 7800 platform this week. The Pro System. Correct, correct. Now, uh, there are probably a few of you out there that have not seen or know very little about the 7800, so we'll go into the background a little bit because it was one of the Atari's lesser known systems, I would say. Um, the Atari 7800 has a weird story. Um, it was released in around 86 of May of 86, and the PAL version came out in 87. So the European version came out a year later. It's a lot like the Coleco vision from last uh, last week. Um, the introductory price on this bad boy, seventy nine bucks. Not too bad. Not bad at all. And in today's currency, you're looking at about a hundred eighty bucks. So it was easily the least expensive current system of the time. Atari took a different approach on this one, and they sort of had to, um, which we'll get into. So this thing sold, and this is this surprised me actually. Because you don't hear much about the 7800. This thing sold three and a half million units. Not bad. Which, if you can recall, Coleco sold somewhere between two and six million <laughs> last uh, last week. So uh, I'd say this probably outsold the Coleco Vision. Absolutely. I've seen way more Atari 7800s out in the wild yeah, than Coleco Visions. I agree. Um, this thing had about 60 games released for it with a but. And the but being that the good thing about the Atari 7800 is it's fully. It's pretty much fully compatible with the original Atari 2600 or VCS cartridges, which makes this a, uh, a valuable little item. Uh, you can pick these up pretty cheap. In fact, I looked around, and in the U.S. right now, you can get one for around 60 bucks or a little bit less, a little bit more, depending on where you, you know, on what kind of deal you get on eBay. Um, and really, the uh, backwards compatibility was the selling point of this item. Like we said, this thing only had around 60 original games made for it. It was not compatible with the 8-bit uh, line and so but it was it being that it was compatible with the 2600 line you had the hundreds and hundreds of games available that were out for that and so it made this sort of an attractive unit and one thing that surprised me about this that I didn't realize is that uh, this is widely known as sort of a uh, dud system when it was released but in actuality Atari actually made money on this thing. They came out ahead uh, mostly due to the low uh, cost of manufacturing. Of course, this is Atari we're talking about. Plus, the uh, uh, they didn't spend much on advertising. And mm -hmm. so, of course, you get what you get. One of the things that hampered this system is it was around at the same time that the NES was. And uh, Nintendo, of course, had their infamous uh, corporate Maloney they pulled. And they basically wouldn't let people that made games for the Nintendo work for anyone else. Not only that, if you sold the NES in your store, a lot of times Nintendo would say, well, we want exclusive rights in your store. You may not sell any other game machine other than the Nintendo. It was a lot of crookery going it on was. in the early 80s and mm -hmm. mid 80s. Um, ironically and hilariously, a game machine that was hampered by Nintendo featured a couple big Nintendo properties on it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, there's there's one other piece of trivia that we should mention about the Atari. When the Atari was about ready to bring the 7800 to market originally, Nintendo had just approached them and asked them to uh, to market and release the NES under Atari's name, and yes. Atari Atari said no. That's a, that, that's think a, about that's how... a Pete Best level mistake, right? Yeah. There. Uh, the, an interesting thing about the 7800 was it was a, it was originally to be released in 1984, mm -hmm. which would have made this a much more attractive system. Yeah. Uh, but and a lot of people think that I've heard various rumors, but the fact of the matter is, uh, the sale of Atari, like there were legal reasons that this couldn't be sold. Um, the the hardware in the Atari 7800 was made by uh, an outfit that did that did arcade boards. In fact, they did Miss Pac Man was a good, was one of their big sellers, and so. Atari, when they had this manufactured, they forgot one thing. They never paid these guys. <laughs> this sounds just like Atari. Yeah. And so that was the wrangling. Who's going to pay for this? The new owners or the old owners? Wow. And finally, and that's what took so long. That mm -hmm. ended up being what the true reason that it took so long to get out. So two years went by, and hordes of these things sat on the shelf. And then after that, they couldn't make them quick enough. So many things hampered this thing from being a big hit. But um, it shipped a lot of units, you know, given the limitations of it. And it's... Uh, it's a great system to go back and get now. These cartridges generally are, I mean, dirt cheap. Uh, and uh, there are only few that are real rare that are more expensive. For the most part, you can go get them just about anywhere and you can get them for real cheap prices. Um, 
So with that in mind, uh, we chose from the 60 game library that was available, uh, we chose two of the games. And I'll go ahead and lead off this week with my choice. And my choice this week was Asteroids. So you're probably thinking to yourself, oh gosh, Asteroids, well, I know all about that. <laughs> There's asteroids for the Atari uh, 7800 is a little bit different, a little more unique than some of the other asteroids. So to, to get into asteroids, just, we should probably just talk about the game asteroids uh, itself. So the original game asteroids uh, was a, of course, was released way, way back. And it was a vector graphics game. And it's, at the time, it ended up being Atari's uh, biggest arcade seller. Uh, this game sold millions of units. It actually replaced Space Invaders as the top-selling arcade machine, which of course was huge Head at honcho, the time. Yeah. Right. And um, this was put together by Ed Logg and a couple other guys. And uh, what made this game unique was was the vector graphics and the, and the uh, momentum uh, of your ship as mm -hmm. you moved it. It was a very interesting game. It was a lot of math going on. And of course those sharp vector graphics that really made it pop. And if you've ever seen this on a vector on a vector monitor, it's not like anything you could reproduce at home. No, would you agree? The the way that the the phosphor the phosphorescence of it it glows in a way that that cannot be duplicated. Correct. And really, the only system that could pull it off was the Vectrex, right. which it had that same which monitor. was a home uh, home console that had a was a vector monitor mm -hmm. with, that was built into the console, and it, it didn't have a version of Asteroids, but it had a, it shipped with a very similar game. The, uh, two asteroids, and it looked real good. So, uh, when this moved from the arcade to the home back in the uh, 80s uh, to the original Atari 2600, uh, the of course the vectors were gone, and it was replaced by solid colored, um, various colored asteroids. Right, same basic concept, and admittedly the Atari 2600 port is outstanding. Have you have you played that one before? Uh, yeah, it's uh, that was when I think of asteroids, I still think of the twenty six hundred version. That's the version. It's I the one you'd see, would have seen the most mm -hmm. as well. Um, the Atari version, among uh, one of the things Atari and uh, Space Invaders was like this too. You would have like a thousand different game variants mm -hmm. that you could pull off, and it made a that asteroids very unique. I mean, it wasn't beautiful by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it worked well. All the concepts from the arcade were there, plus some additional stuff that they put in, and it worked well. And that was sort of the flagship version. And then when you flash forward to, and of course this was ported or ripped off on every machine. A lot of machines had official ports, and a lot of machines had knockoffs. Was that, there a Coco Asteroids game? There was a Coco Asteroids game. Uh, it wasn't Asteroids, it was uh, something, I think it was called Microbes or something. I think you were uh, fighting cells in the body, but it was the exact same thing. But uh, if you look at Atari's official consoles, which is what I mainly looked at, you're talking the 5200, which would have, which is the successor to the 2600, and the Atari 8-bit computer lines. They both pretty much had the exact same version of Asteroids. It's wildly regarded as garbage. It was a horrible uh, version. I, I've got it, and I don't know if you've ever played the 8-bit version. You know, it's funny. I, I, I probably have, but I have no memory of it. So Yeah, it's... <coughs> It's a real uh, ugly version. It doesn't doesn't take advantage of the additional hardware. No, it absolutely yeah. doesn't. So, um, Atari was due for a proper version of Asteroids, and when 70, the 7800 came out, this was the, sort of one of the flagship titles when the system was launched, and it was ready pretty early on. Um, so, what makes this different than your than the arcade or the home versions? Well, for starters, they, they, they're one of the few versions that, that went completely away from trying to simulate the asteroids from the arcade version because someone somewhere realized that the vectors just don't look that good at home. Mm -hmm. they, look, they look like jagged stair-step lines, uh, and they just didn't look good. There were no uh, post effects like there are now to make stuff look like neon and whatnot. They just look crummy. Yeah. So... What they did in this, and they did something that the 7800 does very well, which was they put these kind of scanned, rotating meteors, almost like little planetoids at the beginning. Mm -hmm. They've got a little, you can, they're so well detailed, you can see the various craters yeah. on them and the, and the texture of them. And they, and they, they, they rotate. They all have like a dot on them that's mm -hmm. sort of like a crater that you can see it spin. And mm -hmm. it's the simulation of the spinning and the shadow effect is top shelf. It yeah. is really good. Uh, something else that the, of course, the uh, Atari, uh, the arcade version, this didn't have any music at all. You know, in fact, we had like almost like a space for like a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. This one does that, but one thing it does that I like, uh, and this is not going to win any like music awards because it has music, but it has this some interesting sound effects in the background. You'll just hear this kind of 
a chime occasionally or something. It, it gives you the, it does a good job of simulating like you're in space mm -hmm. without actually doing anything. I always like the, the way it sounded. Um, the, uh, the best part of this one though, that this is something that was not on uh, any of the early systems, is the fact that not only can you play uh, one player, you can play two player, you know, taking turns. It's also got team play. <coughs> team play is real neat. Two people play simultaneously, and you share one score. And as long as somebody has uh, uh, doesn't run out of men, you just keep you can keep playing. And so uh, you can you can you, it gives you different strategies. It sort of reminds me if you've ever played. Um, there was a game I'm trying to think of what it was called, uh, where you two ships were hooked together. Do you remember that one? It was an arcade vector game, uh, but uh, you have to use strategy. For two people, because but the good thing about it is you can you can protect each other's flank. Mm -hmm. You can uh, you can protect each other from getting hit by the asteroids. I guess I should probably mention that the gameplay in this you're a little triangular ship, and the screen is filled with little asteroids, and you every time you shoot them they split into several other asteroids and they get smaller. Yeah, and, and the, then eventually you try to get rid of all the asteroids. The thing that makes this game unique for the time was that it had really good physics. So when you're when you're thrusting. You don't just stop when you stop thrusting. You continue to float. So you, on the arcade machine, you have buttons that control, you know, thrust and rotate. Yeah. Um, with this, you're you're pushing forward and back, and it's all about controlling your momentum as you as you you know wrap around the screen. Yes, this and this this is one of the games that has wrap around. So no matter what part of the screen you go off on, you'll come back on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that made this game unique, also on the 7800, was it had support for the original 2600 joysticks. And the, and the 7800 stick, and they did different things. It would sort of detect which one you had in. So if you're playing this with the 7800 joystick, which has two buttons uh, on it, you use one button to shoot, and one button will will do your hyperspace. I believe, I believe it's hyperspace. If you use the 2600 stick, you'll use, uh, you'll use uh, up to thrust and back to hyperspace. Right. And so you only need one button, mm -hmm. which is... Most people probably wanted to play this on the original 2600 sticks because, as we've talked about before, the 7800 sticks are not good. Yeah, uh, they're they're pretty crummy, actually. I should have brought one out. Yeah. I have one in the box. They uh, they they are a keypad with a little tiny mushroom head on it. It's just not it's not good. Um, so they had that going for it. It also had, aside from uh, one player, two player, and two player team play, it also had two player competitive play, which is neat. The difference between team play and competitive play is that in team mode, you again, you share one score. In competitive mode, you have both have different scores, plus you can get points for shooting your opponent. In team mode, you can't shoot your opponent. The bullet goes There's through. There's no friendly fire. Yeah. So it makes it a lot more fun to play with a buddy. Uh, and up to this point, I believe this was the first Asteroids game that offered a two-player simultaneous option. Now, I know since then, of course, you've gotten Asteroids that have went on the, uh, you know, the N64, and a Super Nintendo, I think, had one, and I know the Game Boy mm -hmm. had one. And so, they, that, you know, they've given you more robust functions than that, but this was the first one that did it. Uh, the ship in this, it, unlike everything else, and it looks a lot better, including the, including the UFO that pops on the screen. The ship is pretty much exactly the same. They really didn't do much to that, but I guess it's sort of, at that point, it's kind of the, the iconic little triangle, you know, and so that's <laughs> that's what you think of when you think of this game, the little mm -hmm. triangle bebopping around. Um, the, something else that I liked about this game is that unlike some of the earlier attempts at, at asteroids, this one is very smooth. Uh, the asteroids break apart in a very beautiful and smooth way, mm -hmm. and they do that all the while spinning and rotating, and it gives you an overall better play experience, certainly better than the computers. Uh, did at the time they just uh, and the uh, a lot of the other ports and of course a lot of ripoffs. I looked over a lot of the versions of this game and the one that came closest to it was actually the Game Boy version. Really? Which I've not played. Have you played the Game Boy version no. of this? The Game Boy version had a different, uh, it had a different looking ship, a more cool looking ship. But in actuality, it, it, that's pretty much the extent of it. It was aside from that, it was pretty much the same game, mm. the same sort of. It had textured asteroids mm -hmm. and they they spun and they looked cool and it was it looks pretty good like I said having not played it it looks it looked nice but it looks sort of like this one um, some of the other computers that had versions of asteroids most of them tried to simulate that vector effect and of those not the toot our own horn sort of but the Amiga version is very smooth with the vector effect it's probably the best one that I saw outside of the newer 
versions. And of course, Asteroids went on to be on the uh, the PlayStation, which looked like it had a really good version. I've not seen that one before. And the N64 had a version, which I, I've not played. I think it was called Hyper Hyper Space or Hyper Asteroids, something like that. I've not played that one. You, you're an N64 guy, aren't you? Have you ever played that one? I wonder yeah. if it was a, do you think it was a 3D sort it, of it thing? It was sort of, mm-hmm. a, yeah, it kind of was, but it kind of was. It was uh, simulated, uh, so it looked okay. It wasn't any great shakes, you know. Um, <clears throat> but overall, this, and, and when I pick up my 7800, this is one of the games I always go to. Uh, I know, like I said, uh, Asteroids, we've talked about this a couple weeks ago, where Atari sort of kept mining their classics and just putting them back on the screen. And they did that with the 7800 in spades. Mm-hmm. You've got pole positions, and you've got Donkey Kongs, and you've got all the stuff that you would think you would have that, that by this point was, you know, s- this game was like nearing 10 years old, right. effectively, when it came out. So, uh, uh, but it's okay. If they're going to try to do something different with it, which is what I think they did, uh, then, I, I, then you know, cheers to them. I thought it was a pretty good game overall. What did you, now, had you played this before I mentioned it? I'd played it in, in passing. Yeah. Um, my uncle had a 7800 growing up. He was a big Atari guy and I, I remember playing this. Um, but I, did, I never played it long enough to really separate it in my mind from the 2600 version. And when I fired this back up, I was very impressed with the way that the asteroids looked. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought overall, um, you know, the, the, the star field in the back was a nice addition. It's no way uh, yeah. comparable to the star field in something like Cosmic Arc. But uh, it still looks really, really neat. It's <laughs> it's funny because th- th- this being so much old, uh, newer, newer than Cosmic right. Arc. Yeah, that, <laughs> I mean, this star has got multicolored stars. They sort of shimmer and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they wink in and out. And you stuff. know, it's not like it's uh, amazing or anything. I'll give right. you that. But of course, Roy, that that doesn't. There wasn't anything like that in the original. So at this point, you're just sort of ma- they're making stuff up anyway. Right. So in the arcade, there was a game called Asteroids Deluxe or Deluxe Asteroids. Mm-hmm. On, I ever, think it was Asteroids Deluxe. Have you ever played that one? Um, I, it was pretty popular. Uh, one thing I remember about it was it had a really cool like backdrop that w- that sat behind the asteroids. It was a neat effect that that Atari yeah. used to use. In fact, w- was that not present in the original game? Was that only on Deluxe? I don't remember. It's been so long since I played it in the arcade, I just can't remember. I, I remember it in Deluxe. May- maybe especially. I only played Deluxe in yeah. the arcades. In, the, in Deluxe, your ship looks a little bit different. It's got like an extra couple fins out the back. And also, it, you have shields. Mm. Um, this carried over into the 2600 version of Asteroids. Where you, uh, there are re- there are versions of that one that take away hyperspace and add the shield. Give you a shield, right? Now hyperspace, of course, when you when you hit the hyperspace, you literally blink off the screen and you just blink somewhere randomly mm-hmm. on the screen. It's and like, I think that there's a one in four or one in eight chance that you'll simultaneously explode upon reentry yeah, into hyperspace. Yeah, it, well, often you'll mm-hmm. just be on or right beside an asteroid and yeah. just run you. It's, it's like a it's like a panic button. Mm-hmm. You know, I very rarely use it unless I have to. So the shield was much welcome. It's a much better. It's much more player friendly, yeah. and the like I said, the twenty six hundred version had the shield. The twenty six hundred also had a, a thing where you could basically flip the ship completely backwards Just in like one stroke. Immediate, yeah, immediately one hundred and eighty degree. Yeah, turn. those those player friendly things are not present in this. I will mm-hmm. say, if this if this has a downside, it's the fact that it while it has a, it's a lot of a robust options, it does not have shields. It does not have that flip around function. That's which was pretty popular, and so some people are kind of turned off by it simply, simply because uh, uh, that those features aren't there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, you know, eh, it's uh, you know, what are you gonna do? So I looked over some reviews for this thing, and most of these are modern, more modern reviews. Some of them, of course, by now are getting kind of old, you know, ten years old or whatever. Um, it got mostly between eighties and nineties, uh, you know, above average B, which I think that's a pretty good score. I would not, would I call this the best game on the on the system? It's close. I mean, it really, it, it's, it's pretty good. But I would say somewhere in the 90 range, I think, is, is, is fair. Um, I looked this up on eBay, and these are going very cheap. It's funny thing that the 7800, they must just have oodles of games. Because, I mean, you see them, they're not as prevalent as the 2600, but, I mean, they stand out. You can see most of the Atari 7800 games, if I can get this out of here. Oh, I'll show it. They're silver. They're, they're silver like that. And they have the so they're easily recognizable. Well, you, 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 that tells you the the um, the age of the cartridge. 
Uh, I believe that the, 70, the the Silver Label games are the latest games to be released. They were released in like 91 or something like that. And they're the ones that are the most common because they just made a, a billion of them. Mesa had a really sweet deal with their supplier. Because yeah. those that you see, they do have full color label 7800 games that came out when the system launched. And then there's also a brown label series of games too. Most of the ones, you, most of the ones I see are the silver ones. Yeah. I do have a couple... To have like I've got one that's got a black label, mm -hmm. and I've got a couple that are color. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, they're silver. I did read that the Atari Asteroids for this is one of the few games in the system to have its own custom box art. Most of them just ripped off whatever the 2600 yeah. had. They just mm -hmm. restuck it back on it, which is kind of lame. Mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to do? So, but these are easy to find uh, on eBay. I found these all day long, boxed, boxed. For I mean, I found one new in box, twelve bucks shipped, free shipping. Wow, that's as cheap as it's going to get. Yeah. A, a new in box shipped for twelve bucks. There are so many new in or sealed seventy eight hundred games still out there. I mean, I think I paid five bucks for my Defender. I bought it from a guy who's new and sealed. Um, this is the if you want to collect sealed games on the cheap, the seventy you're not going to do any better than the seventy eight hundred. Yeah, and I will say that the box on this is actually pretty attractive. As Tar Atari always not used to have the really nice box art. Then they would really spend some money on having it really nicely done. Mm -hmm. It was like a piece of art, yeah. you know. And so Asteroid sort of fits into the old school uh, version of those. So again, these things are cheap as chips. You can get them easy. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, on the seventy eight hundred, there was actually another Asteroids release. Uh, this is a homebrew uh, that came out in two thousand and seven called Asteroids Deluxe, and it was uh, like I said, it was a homebrew. It's available on Atari Age uh, for thirty bucks, which would probably make it one of the more expensive cartridges on the seventy eight hundred. But it is a, they've put shields back in, they've added a uh, vector, they've, they've changed the asteroids to a back to the vector base. Mm -hmm. um, it looks pretty good. I, I, I still think I prefer the colored asteroids, the vector ones, but it looks pretty good. And, and this is, I haven't played it, I just saw pictures of it. So that was probably, that was a, it looks like a pretty good uh, rendition of this if that's your, if you really wanted to have vector on your, on your 7800 as close as you can get. It's available, and if you're into that, go over to Atari Age. They had them, like I said, 30 bucks a pop. So uh, anyway, that's Asteroids. Pretty fun game. I I've always liked Asteroids. One of the first arcade games I ever saw, by the way. Oh, cool. And just and you can imagine a little a little young Aaron walks up to a vector graphics screen, and says like, "Oh crap! Look at this stuff! I couldn't believe it." So from 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 the classic to the <laughs> wacky, and also from the one of the cheaper cartridges, the probably is it the most expensive cartridge in the I, it's, system. It's in the top three for yeah. sure. <laughs> Bo, why don't you show us what you've got this week? All right, my game this week is Ninja Golf. These are two words that most would not put together. No, uh, no. <laughs> uh, Ninja Golf was um, released in 1990 uh, for the 7800 by Blue Sky Software. Uh, Blue Sky Software was a, a company that I, I'd never heard of, but they actually released a ton of stuff. Uh, they were formed in 88, and they lasted all the way until 2001 when they finally got shut down when uh, Interplay, who was kind of over them, ran into some, some trouble. But uh, check out some of these these games. So they did uh, World Series Baseball. You know, the, the famous uh, baseball game for the Genesis. That was one of the big okay. system sellers for that system. Vector Man. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. the Genesis game. Mm -hmm. that's, yep. a, that's a pretty good game, too. Joe Montana Football. Yeah, it's not so good. It's not one. so good, but no. it is it is sort of a well-known game. They did probably the other, if you were going to pick another non-traditional arcade port or non-arcade port for the 7800, what's the other one besides Ninja Golf? Non-arcade port? Yeah, the one that comes to mind. I don't know. What do you got? Scrapyard Dog. I don't, I've never even played that. Okay, well, that is sort of uh, the 7800's answer to the Mario games. Oh, I see. Okay. And, of course, the all-time eternal classic, Avoid the Noid. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, and there's, they were still around to win? <laughs> 2001, amazingly wow. enough. So um, this game was ported to nothing. It got no other release. It was an Atari 7800 system exclusive. So when you or friends were bragging about playing The Legend of Zelda in Metroid, you could say, oh yeah, well I got Ninja Golf, baby. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and then you just wouldn't let them play it, let them imagine yeah. it in their mind. Um, so uh, Ninja Golf is... An arcade style action game, Shinobi type style game, mixed with a round of golf. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, um, the way the game works is uh, you alternate between sort of the golf part 
and the action part. So the screen is split into two sections. You have um, the, the, the largest uh, section of the screen, which is two thirds of the screen, uh, is the action zone. And this is where you have your, your side scrolling uh, ninja guy going from the left side to the right side, kicking and throwing ninja stars and stuff like that. Then the bottom third of the screen is a golf course. It's, a, it's, a, it's your top down uh, sort of uh, view of a golf course like you see in all kinds of golf games. So um, what you do is uh, the first thing you do is you hit the golf ball. And this is not a, a, a very strategic simulation of the golf <laughs> swing. This is not like leaderboard golf where you're, you're hitting the button multiple times. Basically, you've got a, a line that comes out, extends from your ball. You wait until it gets to the right distance and you hit the button. Okay, so your golfer swings the club. You have no control over the club. There's none of that. Uh, and your job then, after you hit the ball, is to run to your ball. And this is where the action comes in. So uh, you run across all kinds of different uh, obstacles that get in your way. There's uh, other ninjas, uh, there's giant frogs, there's snakes. Uh, and what's neat about this is that whenever you cross a specific kind of terrain uh, in, on the golf course, the enemies sort of shift to uh, accommodate that. So if you hit the ball into a bunker, uh, you, you get this sort of snake charmer music and you're running through the desert and you're fighting snakes. <laughs> yes. If you go into a water hazard, I can tell you, you're, you, you're in trouble. Because <laughs> there are killer sharks that will come at you at a high rate of speed and destroy you. Plus ninjas. Yeah, ninjas are everywhere. <laughs> They're everywhere. They don't. They don't rest. Um, and there's uh, there's bonus items you can pick up. There's a, a thing that'll give you a little bit of invincibility for a little bit. Uh, there's health restoration, um, extra lives. So there's 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 things that'll help you along the way too. Um, now. What happens when you reach the green? Well, instead of a ninja putting simulation, you get something totally off the wall. Uh, the screen transforms into kind of a space harrier perspective where it's an over the shoulder view of your ninja. And then there's, again, a very space harrier like enemy. There's this dragon that sort of shimmies its way across the screen. And what you have to do to defeat the dra or to, to beat the hole is just throw throwing stars at the dragon without dying. It sort of reminded me of the like the, what is it, the bonus stage in Shinobi, the arcade game where you guys chucking those stars yeah, like yeah, that. That's I'm sure that this game is very similar to Shinobi in many ways. Um, the the <laughs> now is this a good game? This is this is pretty terrible. This is not a good game. <laughs> um, this the the action sequences are okay, I mean, they're, they're not bad. I didn't have any trouble controlling my guy, but you've got a really limited move set you can kick or you can use throwing stars. Um, until you run out. Yeah, until you run out. Um, and that's really all you're doing. Um, the game progresses in difficulty um, you know, as you move through the course. So if you can finish this whole course, you're, you're much better than I am because I couldn't, I couldn't make it all the way to the end. And really, I didn't want to. I, I became kind of bored um, as I was making my way through this. The golf portion of this game is atrocious. You could tell that this was the most tacked on thing in the history of all time. Um, the fact that you can't choose your club you're just basically, you know, you can choose the direction that you hit it, you can choose how hard you hit it, but that's it. Um, the, the, the golf should be in quotation marks on the title of this thing. Um, so anyway, that's what I think. What did you think of Ninja Golf? I like this game, actually. I, this is the first time I've ever played it, is when you picked it, and which I love that. And I'd heard about it. I heard This is one of the games I'd heard a lot about, like, oh, Ninja Golf, that's the game. And I heard it was really good. And so when I and I had no idea what I was doing, like you said, but I mean, it, didn't, it took less than a second for me to. <laughs> it took me longer to figure out what the moles were, the groundhogs. Like, what is that? Right. Um, like Boat said, you you it shows you the little diagram of the of the course, and there's a little dot. There's a little dot, and then there's another dot that flies away from that dot a certain distance, and your goal, and that's where your ball is going to go whenever you hit the joystick. I, I learned that you need to hit the button ahead of time. Because that dot will screw you. Yeah. And, and the thing is, if you hit the ball like a foot, you're still going to get attacked by ninjas mm -hmm. for the little time it takes you to get there. Right. But when, I don't know if Bo mentions, but when you when you hit when you drive the ball and you're running down the field, these there are ninjas that come out. And there are more ninjas depending on how far along you are. There's a red one, and there's a blue one, and then there's sort of like a, a one that blends into whatever background you're on. He's I guess he's like the an super invisible ninja. ninja. Right? And and. So as you're running to where you're, first of all, just the concept of playing golf and being attacked by ninjas as you're going to play the next hole, you know, the, or the next stroke, is great. Yeah, I, I the, love concept, the concept. The though. concept is fantastic. And the fact that the ninja 
is is a uh, uh, out there. I mean, he's got a full ninja suit, and he's out there on the golf course <laughs> playing golf. And you can imagine when this guy plays through, you better get out of the way mm-hmm. because he's bringing four hundred ninjas and God knows what else. <laughs> there, the problem I have with the game. I mean, no one wanted to like this game more than me. It's right up mm-hmm. my alley. I love golf. I love ninjas, and the, I will say the uh, the in between parts where you're on the fairway. It sort of reminds me of like Kung Fu Master yeah. or Karateka, like a mm-hmm. faster version of Karateka where you run. I mean, the guy, the graphics are pretty good. The the guys look good. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a lot like said. It's got a lot of Kung Fu Master in it. Those parts, or and you're throwing stars until you run out of those. The, the difference is is that the hit detection in Kung Fu Master is so much better. Well, also game. these guys just rush you and and, they, and there's when they're just the ninjas, you can you're okay. Mm-hmm. When you've got sharks. You're boned. When you've got that groundhog thing, that thing has a little pain yeah. in the butt. He's real hard to hit, so you basically have to avoid him. Mm-hmm. So I ended up running from a lot of the Yeah, you just things. jump over the groundhog. But they'll come from different sides. They'll come from both sides at once. It's not so, a Sodan type game. So yeah, so you can you can uh, you'll have to blow away one guy or kick him while another guy's on your tail and you just and your guy's you know, he goes at one speed and so you hope you get to the point where it picks back up to the golf. And who knows what happens to these guys once the golf part starts. I guess they just give up. Right. Just <laughs> walk off and, or just wait on the sidelines going like this, ready to come pounce when you hit the ball again. Mm-hmm. Uh, the punishment for going into hazards, because any way it goes, you're, if you, like a lot of the courses will have water across the green, right? If your ball goes across a hazard, which is that's fine, but you're going through that hazard. You have to. You can't go around it. You know. You, you travel in a straight line yeah. to your ball. And so if it, so, you it's there's some strategy to trying to avoid hazards when you can. Mm-hmm. Like I, I didn't go anywhere near water unless I had to. But a lot of the courses have water right, right in the middle. Yeah, of, you can't avoid they it. They built this thing in like the bayou or something. <laughs> it's just water everywhere. Uh, the the bit with the dragon at the end when you putt, which that was interesting that they got rid of putting entirely. Mm-hmm. And I, my guess is they didn't want to r- work on that part of the game, right? Because it's usually in golf games, it's a whole different system. So the fight, the bit where you fight the dragon, dragon looks cool. The dragon's tough to hit. Mm-hmm. It's kind of fun to throw the stars at him. And when you f- beat the dragon, he looks real sad as he wanders <laughs> off the screen. He didn't kill him. He just sort of wanders away. Uh, I never got. It. I only got to like the. the I think at one time I got to the fourth round, fourth hole. That's as far as I could get. And because at that point, you, I mean, it's like crazy time. Uh, this game reminds me, this could have easily, easily been on the NES. Like, you could have picked this up, thrown some music in the background, and mm-hmm. this is an NES game. Yeah. With And the graphics, are, like I said, are pretty favorable to me. Mm-hmm. I think they look pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it's just that um, the, the execution needs work, mm-hmm. you know. And that's that's the flaw. We we didn't mention the bird that dropped the egg on you when you when you go in. <laughs> that's got, every ninja's worst enemy. Yeah, is if the you bird. go into the rough or something, you've got problems there. Like I said, most stuff's not too bad. It's that it's the water that's where they get you. That mm-hmm. the water's brutal. the sharks are really tough. Even the dragon at the end, he's not that tough. No, you know you can get him, and he's easy to you know you're not gonna get hurt either. So he's not that bad. But overall, will I play this again? Yes, because I'm stupid, and I like silly things, and I I like. I like Kung Fu Master, and just like this reminds me of that. This game is ripe for a fan remake. Well, it's funny you mention that because in 2006, the game received a fan remake. Oh. <laughs> um, Look at that! I'll so, let it fit you right there. Do you remember Newgrounds? Remember that site? No. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Newgrounds was an extremely popular website that uh, when Flash games were first becoming popular, mm-hmm. this was the home of all those Flash games, um, and so. Um, there is, if you go on Newgrounds, and then you have to re-enable Flash because Chrome has taken it off most browsers, but you can do it. Uh, you can play the fan remake of uh, Ninja Golf. And it is it is very faithful to the original. Uh, they, they sort of updated the <laughs> <How> graphics. <faithful. laughs> um, they added some music. Uh-huh. But at its core, it's still sort of the same game, So which means it's still not that great. Yeah. But um, but it is, I mean, somebody remade it. <laughs> you know, we should also mention that the... the the uh, when you go into the into the rough, not the woods, but just the rough, mm. there's a frog that comes at you. This frog looks awesome. I mean, it moves awesome mm-hmm. and it looks great. It's very well animated. I mean, whoever worked on this, I don't know if they were under the gun or it was a budget thing. But I mean, you could actually have done something if you would have strapped a good golf game or even a a mediocre. If golf you put game. something in there that has the same like uh, that had any sort of ability to do any golf, right? Like the lowest level golf game. What's the lowest thing we've played that we've ever played? Maybe like a, the first leader, yeah. world class golf. Yeah. 
you could have put that in here, and then added spiced up the fight stuff, and mm -hmm. then you got something. That's exactly you right. This something. could have been an all time classic. And you put it and put some good music behind it. Mm -hmm. I and mean, like I said, the graphics on this. I mean, as far as a seventy eight hundred goes, this has got to be amongst the best looking, you know, non ball blazer type. I mean, this, this game is sharp. The, the the everything in it looks nice. It mm -hmm. plays. It it moves well. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no slowdown or anything. The, there's a lot of nice little flourishes, like in the uh, when they there, there's an opening thing where it tells you you your ninja training is almost complete. The only thing you've got left is the most dangerous trial. You know, nine rounds of ninja golf. Mm -hmm. It's presented right in a funny way. Yeah. There's this kind of a dragon that kind of hovers over the scroll, mm -hmm. and his his fins and stuff are kind of moving in the wind. The opening is very impressive. It is. It is. I would like to see this redone as a, a, a again. All right. And I mean, on a modern on a modern console, or maybe even the Atari, if you could pull it off. Uh, but I'd like to see something done. Like you know, what would be perfect is the Jaguar. It's got enough power to really do it up. Get some special effects in there. Get it would some fit cool right audio in on the Jaguar. In it. Yes, it absolutely yeah. would. <laughs> and what you could do is get to Kazumi Ninja guys, and then just use just rip those right out of that. Stick them in here. There's your game right oh, there. Oh man, I'm, I think I've written something right there. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, yeah, I liked it more than you probably because it, it's. It's 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 not crappy enough to where it turned me off, and it's stupid and silly enough to where I couldn't stop. So I played a lot of this. I understand. Believe it or not, I played more of this than Asteroids. Well, it's embarrassed to say it. You'll notice that we do not have an actual cop copy of this cart no. <laughs> because this is not a cheap uh, thing at all. Uh, the cart only is selling on eBay. One just sold for around forty bucks. Really? Um, that yeah. cheap? Yeah, Man. and uh, you can get a boxed cart. Uh, they sell all day for about 100 bucks. So. And the box on this is pretty awesome because mm -hmm. it's got a ninja with a golf bag over his shoulder. And in the golf bag, he's got like... Nin he's got like a he's got like a band and he's and got a bandolier. It looks like with tees. Yeah. <laughs> as much was done on that cover as was in the game. I'm convinced of it. So uh, between 40 and 100 bucks yeah. on a box one. Mm -hmm. I'm... Yeah. Don't tempt me, Bo. Oh, on that one. oh your awful. birthday's coming up. Oh, yeah, Bo. <laughs> Take care of business, son. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aaron. We've reached that time in the show. Oh, my. It's time to spin the retro roulette. It's time to break out the retro roulette. <laughs> well, we got to break <laughs> it out. And, and watch, I've... watch the antics. Oh, something's going on here. Things were happening and things were going too well. Uh -oh. Let's see here. Another edit boat. <laughs> What's going on here? Is it uh, just that one camera? Yeah, oh, we can God. always we can always put it on the other camera. Yeah, I could move this. Set it right up front. Yeah, let me just try and add it back on here real quick. Dun, 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 dun. Did I ever mention you that I've never been a fan of USB technology, and this yeah. is one of the reasons? Well, this is even this is going through that strange box that we have. All of this was not ever meant to do any of this. No, nope, I'm going to have to reset OBS. So, I like your game though, but and we're back. <laughs> All right, so we'll just um, we'll just act like that never happened, and we'll say. The, the the wheel camera is down, and so no, we're don't running. say that. We we'll just put it right here. All right, I'll we'll move put it right this, there. So go ahead, and start okay. from there, and I'll just move this off. All right, all right, Aaron. We're going to take out the retro roulette. All right, and place it thusly in the place of the seventy eight hundred. And as you can see, we have a new spot on the wheel. Uh, we have the Game Boy, the Nintendo Game Boy, our first portable system, if, unless you count the Vectrex, which was not really portable. Have you, have you tried to carry one of those in your pocket? That <laughs> so thing's not portable. We're going to give this thing a spin and see what we're playing next week. Good spin, Boat. Thank you. Here we go. And we have a winner. What is it, Boat? The Nintendo Entertainment oh, System. My. Okay, Nintendo Entertainment System. Let me consult the envelopes of fun. So this this will be our first venture into the Nintendo. Here we go. And now I'll reach in and pick out our picks here. That's be yours, Mr. Boat. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's your week to kick first. So what are you gonna have? All right, uh, I'm gonna pick 
Urban Champion. Oh, okay. Well, boy, it's a tough choice because I like all these games. I'm going to go with Popeye. All right. Popeye next week. So Urban Champion and Popeye, <laughs> two games where you beat the crap out of stuff. I like it. So anything else to add, folks? That's it. Thanks for joining us this week on another ARG Presents. Please be back next week, and we'll give some NES a shot. Mm -hmm. Until then, adios. adios. John making a new podcast.